Triumph once again with uh, finding, finally getting this voxel shading working. Um, in fact, I say Triumph because all of yesterday I thought there was no way I would get this working. It was one of those programming days where everything just didn't quite work out. Um, but today it's all working. Check out how beautiful this cube thing looks. And when we rotate to different camera angles, we've got the right shading of being applied. Right, you can see that the camera, the the light, the uh, the consistent point, the directional light is always shining from the same angle. We've got some nice shadows. We've even got some highlights on the edges of the corner pixels, and uh, really looks good in my opinion. And um, and then it's being applied. The same technique is being applied to all these other um, a, a lot of these other uh, models here. You can see, for example, the the ground right here looks really good um, yeah actually let's come let's see if we can compare it really quick to the old version without all this stuff oh yeah it's not that hard uh, we'll just go to ground no actually we can we can just turn off the the shader flag globally in model when we go to shade voxels we can just return this will give you a kind of a an idea of what it looked like for most of yesterday and um, I'll show you the mistake I was making in all of this shading of voxels the way this this shading works is it when it's loading the model it knows what the directional lights vector is it knows whether a a particular entity has the flag to be shaded and uh, see what I mean look at all these look at the ground look right below the player right here these the bottom of these ground models here is just all one gray color right you can't tell what the difference is and this is what the engine looked like mostly as of you know just less than 24 hours ago so it's really gray it's you can't really tell what's going on and in fact let's go let's go check out the uh the maze cube see what i mean it's just one blob of of white, off-white color. Let's re-enable that. Um, so th the reason it's such a triumph for me, a feeling in in the programming sense, is that I spent the in I thought I had it took an entire day to set this up, and then an entire day of something else. I forget, like set up, and then. I don't know, sort of getting the initial system working so that it was shading voxels. And then all yesterday, the third day, was just being thwarted by this one bit of code which I had wrong. So what this code is doing right here is it's casting rays from from each voxel. First it goes, it goes ahead and like sets up a bit volume, which I covered in the last video, where it just basically volumizes the voxels. For every voxel, it sets a bit within a bit volume and then it goes and casts rays from each voxel to determine which ones are in shadow and which ones are highlights um, but I had this highlighting code wrong the entire day and the shading code wrong the entire day so it made me think that my system wasn't working where in fact all it really needed was one little tiny change um, what I was doing was I was I was actually doing the shading and the highlighting in the vector from uh, that's towards the light rather than the highlight being towards the light and the shade being away from the light and then I was also using it just I was just looking at collisions right the number of collisions inside the the volume and treating that as uh, basically just a zero or a one right if there was one or more collisions then that was a highlight and if there was one more collisions for the shading then that was that was in shadow uh, but it's not it's not meant to be that way it's uh, it's meant to be this way where um, each of them is separate right so there's a ray going away from the light and a ray going towards the light and one of them is the highlight one of them is the shadow and then it clamps the number of collisions um, and that's that's what gives you um, the value of the highlight so that if a highlight is zero then that's no highlight being applied if it's one, two, or three, that's increasing amount of highlight being applied, and uh, so basically it was just it was just that it was just this this bit of code 
it was confusing me all day and then finally I don't know what happened but I just tried something else and it worked so and then here's how it actually goes and applies the highlights um, it just multiplies the color of the highlight and um, it actually uses an exponential right here it's squaring the value of the highlight um, so the highlights look really poppy at the very top of their values and they look just barely there for the lower values and then the shading um, is right here it's uh it's basically just taking 40 percent of the value being in in shade or not um, and then oh and then also it applies some color shifting to make the hues look really cool let's actually show it without color shifting And you'll see the difference between these two is actually quite dramatic. This is kind of a cool effect because um, it gives you more color depth. It really looks, uh, it makes things look more, um, more real and more, more satisfying to the eye. So here we are, right? Everything looks pretty gray, right? As you, as we're, let's rotate around here. See how the backs of these pillars look gray, the bottoms of the ground look gray everything is pretty gray right and that's it's cool it looks a lot better than it did where it was all just one one color of gray now it's at least got some shading but then let's let's reapply these uh highlights or these uh these hue shifts See how everything is a little bit more colorful. Um, the edges of the the highlights now look a little bit more. I don't know what that's almost like purple or pink. And then when you get in the shadow, these are also more purple and pink. And that's just done by shifting the hue a little bit depending on the value. Um, you can see the edges of these ground tiles on the top shouldn't be so black. That's I'll work with I'll work with some of the details, right? Make it look all better in, in general. But um, I'm really happy with how this all turned out. We've got this sweet shading going on. It works at all the right ca camera angles. Um, there is one issue with the with rotatable models. Um, the player is a rotatable model, which means that right now we're actually viewing the player as if it were at camera angle zero, but we are at camera angle 180, no, 135 right now. But we're viewing the model as if it's at zero. So um, the player does not have this shading effect at all applied. He has actually a dynamic shading going on where um, he's actually shaded by voxel casting. So it's actually dynamic ray casting rather than static ray casting. The static ray casting is being applied to all these different entities like the ground and that that floating thing out there that's all done before the game even draws a single single frame um, but this dynamic stuff is done at runtime so um, basically what would happen if we did put the shader flag on the player it would always be shading if he was facing south or facing what it would look like if he's facing the camera then he'll always have the shading as if you were at camera angle zero so I need to I need to actually figure out a way to have different shading being applied for rotatable models. And there's actually, there's one more rotatable model, which is pretty important. It sees these stairs right here. These stairs, they have this one like bright voxel there, um, which I don't know, it's kind of bugging me, it's too bright. And then see these stairs look exactly the same as the other stairs because that's, that's being rotated. And, um, it's a rotatable model and the shading is only applied from one angle so it basically no matter how you rotate it it's always gonna look the same or as if it had the same light vector so once again I just needed to uh, make it so rotatable models can work with this new system that's just the last little icing on the cake so that's all for this video I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, catch you on the next one